Hello everyone and thank you for joining us for another episode of the Rick House with Whiskey Culture. We're here in Driftwood, Texas at Desert Door Distillery where they make a historic spirit out of a Texas native plant called Sotol. Thank you all so much for having us. Thank you for taking the time and paying us a visit. Let's go. Whiskey is defined as a spirit made from malted grain, but we know it's so much more than that. Whiskey is passion. It's our history and it's our community. Join us as we explore what it means to be a part of the whiskey culture. Desert Door was our first real taste of the Texan hillside country. The drive was beautiful and the topography drastically shifted from the cityscape to the arid region where their ranch-inspired distillery can be found. And they are producing a unique and historic liquor called Sotol. What is Sotol? Why is it historic? Well, stay tuned and find out down here with us at the Rick House. So Desert Door was uh, actually started as a class project amongst me and two other guys. Um, we're actually all former military and we met at the University of Texas and uh, Desert Door was literally our class project. Um, when we first started uh, setting out to uh, establish Desert Door as a company, we decided that we wanted to make it. And so um, we bought sort of like smaller scale equipment to sort of develop the process. And then we ended up de scaling up that um, from um, the smaller scale. And we started with a uh, little 15 gallon still, we call it the little girl. Uh, we actually still use it to this day, but it's sort of a traditional like uh, column uh, still and it was heated using direct heating elements. And so when we started trying to scale this up in our heads and like figuring out how this would all work, we sort of built a still that, you know, reflected that. So this is a 400 gallon still. Um, it used actually direct heating on the bottom. We had an 880,000 BTU burner on the bottom. Um, one of the things that we actually found though is like as we started to scale up is this approach was wrong. Um, that the right approach on a larger scale is using steam jacketed. It allows for much more delicate sort of uh, fermentation. The other thing is our mash has a lot of particulate in it that comes through uh, from the processing and the squeezing of the plants. Um, and we actually get a lot of sort of sand and dirt and stuff like that um, through it because it is a plant that just grows right in the ground. Um, and so uh, using direct heating like this uh, put a lot of wear and tear on the system and it didn't lead to sort of the highest quality of product. Using steam jacketed, we're able to like, um, we're able to actually heat our mash at a, a much more gentle sort of rate and it allows for a sort of consistent um, experience through the entire distillation process. Um, so we use this actually for a, about a couple months before we just realized it was wrong and we replaced it with a, a thousand gallon still and we actually have now a, a second thousand gallon still that we're, we're adding um, that sort of mirrors that one exactly. You know, it's very exciting to us because we've fallen in love with this plant. We've been fallen in love in what it represents in terms of like West Texas history and not just West Texas history, but American history. And so what's so special about it is we can go out, we can take you out there, we can show you this history. Uh, we can actually allow you like feel and touch sort of the way that the natives would have done it. Um, and we can show it to you. You can also sort of experience it the way that they would have done it. And um, what's so exciting for us is, you know, we're still uncovering this history. We do a lot of research. We have an on-site, like, you know, on-staff historian who like pours into these things to try and uncover it. And uh, then like, what's so exciting about us is then the opportunity to sort of share it with the world, right? Yeah. And we do that through different stories that we tell. Um, and that's sort of a you know, big focus of us is like, that's really why we as a company exist is like, we wanna share the story with the world. Well, that's incredible. Thank you so much for having us. And Absolutely, Greg, with us. thank you very much. While the Native American inventors of Sotol use the sun and the rain to produce their drinks, Desert Door uses a blend of traditional methods and technology to meet the demand of their rapidly increasing fan base. The Sotol fibers are cooked to release all that delicious glucose and nutrient filled juices and then squeeze dry so they can collect that juice to be fermented and distilled down. From there, some is sold as is. However, 
Some is destined for additional flavor development by barrel aging, something that we here at the Rick House love to see. So we are actually going to pick a single barrel. Uh, we're doing a charity pick here. Tell us a little bit about the charity. So our charity uh, is called Wild Spirit Wild Places. And it was directly attributable to the journey that we've gone on with the Sotol plant and how it connects us to the land. And so the intent of Wild Spirit Wild Places is to protect and conserve the diminishing rangelands of West Texas. Well, let's pick a barrel. While Sotol and its unique brand of earthy sweetness can be enjoyed straight off the still, its unique flavor profile also lends itself to barrel aging quite well. Nice wood notes and caramel complement the naturally savory and lightly sweet flavors to create something truly impressive. Let's dive a little deeper into the Sotol pool. We are trying two completely different uh, barrels here. Tell us a little bit about the first one that we're trying here. So, and then there were two. So this one is off of a medium toast. So it's no char, just a really nice slight toast. So in all those earthy vegetable components, which is the basis for both of these barrels, this one you're gonna get like really cool notes of like tropical fruits and maybe some cotton candy, but it's a very, very sweet. And like we were talking about earlier, had you not seen it thieved out of the barrel, you'd swear that um, there was something added to it. Yeah, I mean, it's just got this really delicious uh, viscous mouthfeel. It's just mm -hmm. very full pour, mm -hmm. but it's it's so good. I mean, it, it's got a ton of flavor to it. Really, really developed flavors. Uh, things that you would expect to come from something way, way longer in the barrel. Right. But I mean, it, it, it's also subtle. Like it's not. It's there's a good backbone to it, but it's not too hot. It's got a great mouthfeel, but it's just not. It's not too much. Like you can, you feel like you want to go back for more. Like that's right. You haven't just had one and you're just saturated with it. You know, it's just a really beautiful balance of everything. Yeah. Well, thank you very much. Salute. That, I mean, that's excellent. I mean, it, it, you were saying it's probably close to what 115 right now. Yeah, we put it in the barrel at about 120, and uh, typically what I've seen for our barrels over the course of the last four years of us barreling is they're about 114 and a half to 115 two off of the uh, still so before we cut it down to 100 sort of. I mean this is this is so good and it's so funny because there's so much whiskey character there and it's it's not a whiskey but there's so much of that developed uh, you know, vanilla spice from the barrel that's right deep caramels mm -hmm. like you said there's there's almost a, a cotton candy fruity note mm -hmm. to it that is just, I mean, it, it's excellent. It, it really is a, a, a very, very well-aged spirit. I mean, the clear mm -hmm. Sotol is excellent. The unaged stuff is great, but uh, the I would say that the barrel aging, it's not that it, it makes it better. It just adds more character and more layers to it and makes it more complex because the clear Sotol itself is really really good i mean it's super easy to drink there's a nice earthy sweetness to it it it's like tequila but it's so much better <laughs> well it's it's got more depth it takes you on a journey right yeah it starts one way and then it's so we like to say that it it starts out telling you that i'm a plant-based spirit i'm a plant but then it tells you where it's from on the finish i actually had a chef from dallas tell me he said brent your spirit to me tastes like big bend after a rain shower I thought that was a, probably about the, the kindest thing anybody could ever say to me, but it just takes you on a journey and very similar in depth to mezcal or like gin. Yeah. Uh, but those can be very polarizing, right? And so this is just a much more softer, much more approachable spirit than those two. And so it's more like a gateway drug, if you will. <laughs> I can see that. And so let's go ahead and try. So this, this one that we tried first was a, a charred barrel, right? It was. And then we're moving on to? The toasted barrel. The toasted barrel. And uh, these were the two barrels that we selected. We kind of wanted to go between one char and one toasted. And- uh, Both it, medium. Yeah, yeah, and they're both very, very, mm -hmm. I mean, they're just beautiful in different ways. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. See, this one, 
a lot of those more delicate flavors. This one feels a lot closer to the the uh, unaged Sotol, the clear, right. but there's so much uh, nuance to the character mm -hmm. that's been added to it. There's all of these, these beautiful, subtle uh, barrel flavors that toast to it, and it right. really helps enhance some of those earthy flavors because right. that char is not, you know, it's not adding so much to it, mm -hmm. and, and this toast is more enhancing some of those those typical flavors. That's right. Is that right? I like to think that regardless of the barrel, it's a very, very nice balance of the sweet and savory aspect yeah. of the spirit, right? So all of the earthy vegetal components that are the underlying, you know, base spirit and the clear spirit, they just get like different characteristics that are layers of flavor on top of it, but they don't completely mute out, you know, the base spirit. It just complements it. Awesome. I, I think they're both amazing, but I think out of the two, I think the charred barrel. I think just coming from a, a from our whiskey background, that's right. Mimics a lot of those flavors, but I have to say this is not just a so tall for a whiskey drinker, but just uh, for everyone in general. It's got right. such a great balance of of people who might like um, some sweeter flavors. Like if you're a typically a, a rum drinker or something like that, it's got those beautiful, that's beautiful right. sweet characteristics to it. It's got those really developed vanilla and caramel notes, that nice uh, underlying barrel char note to it without it being overpowering, which is great for whiskey drinkers. And then if you're a tequila drinker, this is just better in general. So, <laughs> but I, I think this is excellent. And I think- uh, it Or a is, curious bourbon drinker. Yeah, or a curious bourbon drinker. And I, I think that this would be perfect uh, just all around for people of all different spirits uh, preferences. So a portion of the proceeds are going to go to conservation efforts here in Texas. What exactly does uh, what exactly does each of those dollars do to help preserve the Texas environment? Well, Wild Spirit Wild Places preserves and conserves the diminishing rangelands through education, research, and best land stewardship practices. So we host quarterly wild talks where we get um, we bring in experts in various fields to talk about their respective fields. Uh, we also um, Next month, we have a, uh, a burn, a prescribed burn that we're doing out in uh, Ozona, Texas. So funds like this help us go to actually, you know, bring in volunteers uh, to uh, facilitate those types of initiatives. Awesome. Well, we're looking forward to being able to, to partner with you all and help raise awareness and mm -hmm. uh, help make sure that the environment, that's so important to not just, you know, just environmentalism in general, but so important to us as spirits lovers because mm -hmm. conserving the natural environment, it's its what allows us to get the grain, to get the so tall, to get all of these mm -hmm. things and these conservation efforts. Uh, it, I mean, it, it helps our, our you know, natural environment in general, but it also helps us in the long run as spirits lovers to make sure that there is plenty of good quality, natural ingredients to go around for generations and generations to come. And that's right, and we, we so thank you for your partnership in this, because these funds, what they do is ultimately help us move forward with clean air, clean water, right? Because the lands, you don't want to preserve it. It needs to be conserved, and by being conserved, that allows us to, the land to develop, it allows it to produce clean water and clean air, which is the basis of life. Everyone gets their hands dirty here at Desert Door doing their part to make this awesome and historic drink. But you might not think it, looking at they are absolutely drop-dead gorgeous tasting room in lounge. I mean, really. It looks like we just stepped into some Texan desert-style designer magazine. But it's a spot that we are excited to check out so that we can kick back, relax, and have a drink. All right, so you all have uh, a couple of different so tall expressions that that you have here at Desert Door. Um, tell us about the your your kind of the core of your brand, the unaged uh, so tall. So that's right. We have two enduring skews here. We have our original unaged spirit that's eighty proof, which we're going to start here, which is the foundation for everything that we do here. So very bright, herbaceous, very floral on the nose. You get like notes of eucalyptus, mint. You if know what? I could not put my finger on that, and it, you're absolutely right. I get that eucalyptus. I could not figure out what that note was. But 
So on the nose, it's very familiar, but it takes you on a journey where it, where it starts is not where it finishes. It's got a slight, sweet, creamy, earthy finish to it. Yeah, yeah, it's very uh, it's very light on the front, and then it comes, mm -hmm. it kind of crescendos into this this really nice, sweet, earthy mix, mm -hmm. and then it kind of subtly fades back out into that that really subtle, nice floral, fruity flavor. I've been able to connect with some of my Italian counterparts on it because I believe if you're a grappa drinker, this is your spirit. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm Sicilian and uh, I, I do enjoy grappa, so I can see the, the parallel there. Yeah, like my favorite grappa is uh, de Sessicaia, and uh, this is just has some really nice, interesting, almost like a figgy kind of note to it. Yeah. So this is our second skew where we take the same liquid. So when it comes off the still, it's between 150, 155 proof. We cut it down to either 80 proof for what we just had, or we cut it down to 120 proof where we put it into virgin oak level three char. And so on top of those earthy vegetal components, now you get the nice layers of like coffee, caramel, vanilla, a little bit of cinnamon or allspice on the finish. Oh, I see that, yeah. It's, it's got that nice spice profile. I definitely mm -hmm. get like that cinnamon that you're talking about, some mm -hmm. clove, a little yeah. bit of, of honey undertone to it. That's mm -hmm. really nice. It's a really nice balance of sweet and savory. Yeah, that's excellent. And it's got a lot of characteristics. Uh, again, we were talking about that, mm -hmm. that whiskey drinkers will definitely appreciate. But not just that. I mean, it, it really is kind of this, this omni spirit that has so mm -hmm. many different good characteristics that you can you can draw some parallel to. So mm -hmm. it's got that like sweet fruitiness, vanilla, almost like a like a rum, but then it's got that caramel, that spice profile, almost right. like a like a whiskey, but then it's got that nice earthiness, like the tequila. It, I mean, it really is kind of this, this omni matrix spirit that kind of encompasses some great things from a bunch of different kinds of spirits. That's right. But the one thing that is challenging for folks is that this is not an elevation necessarily of this spirit. It's a completely different interpretation. Yeah. So. You know, this isn't going to up your margarita game, but it will definitely up your uh, old fashioned. <laughs> and so lastly, um, we, we tend to be driven by curiosity here. You know, that's how we started making spirit out of a plant that nobody's ever heard of to begin with. And what we've started to figure out is develop these interesting partnerships through just cur morbid curiosity, right? And so last year we launched what we would call the Explorer Series, where we would do a one-off, where we would take our finished product, our age product, and then take it and double barrel it. And so this particular expression, we partnered with uh, a fine, one of the finest uh, bourbon distilleries in the country, the first bourbon distiller in Texas uh, with Garrison Brothers, and we call it the Driftwood Cowboy. So we took our age product and then we finished it in Garrison Brothers Cowboy Bourbon Barrels. And awesome. It's absolutely fantastic. Cheers. You can definitely get that bourbon character and that That's bourbon right. influence off the nose immediately. But it's, again, it's not necessarily, it, it's difficult to explain unless you actually get a couple bottles and try this. It's not necessarily that, that one of these has, has a better nose right. to it or a better profile. They're just different and, and, right. and the character is different, but they're all excellent. And it's, it's not necessarily uh, an elevation, like you were saying, it really is just uh, a, a different set of characteristics That's right. to it. And we could have three different people here and they will like each one of these differently. Yeah, that's excellent. I mean, you, you can definitely tell that bourbon character right. on it. It's got a lot more of that, that oak profile, a lot mm -hmm. more of that, uh, that traditional uh, butterscotchy sweetness that you that's get right. from the corn aging. It's, yeah, you definitely got the caramel in there for sure. Yeah, and it's really nice. and. One of the things that's really cool is you get a lot of that bourbon character up front and, and it almost transitions from that bourbon character up front back into this, you know, spiced that's right. vanilla fruity characteristic and then almost back right at the end mm -hmm. to that that uh, unaged, you know, base level so tall. And it's it, it's interesting that you go through this and it, it is almost like a journey like you were mm -hmm. talking about, you know, the journey of so tall as, right. as one of the earliest drank spirits and and the journey of you know Desert Door bringing that in, it's almost a reflection of that here in that's these right. spirits, which is really cool. Well, thank you very much, so appreciate that. And that's what I, I explain to people. It's like on the nose, you're like, it's familiar, right? You've been yeah. here. Is this cognac or is this bourbon? But it's not until the finish where it drops you off and you're like, no, that's not corn or grape.
Thank you for joining us for this episode of The Rick House. How can our viewers follow you all on social media? You can follow us at uh, DesertDoor.com as our website or hashtag at DesertDoor, also DesertDoor on Facebook. Awesome, and thank you for taking us through the distillery and showing us how important Sotol is, not just to uh, spirits ongoing, but the history of Texas and the history of the Americas as a whole. Well, we appreciate you guys coming out and helping us uh, share this story with all of your viewers out there. Sounds good. All right. Let's go. Thank you for spending time with us down here at the Rick House, brought to you by Whiskey Culture. This show wouldn't be possible without your dedication to the whiskey community and continued support. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe to learn more about the world of whiskey.